Hi everyone. A greetings from Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Jindigal, Hyderabad. My name is Paul. I am an assistant professor of English and soft skills trainer in the Department of English, IARE. First of all, my sincere thanks to you all who have joined for this lecture. Uh, my lecture will be on vocabulary learning. So I have divided this lecture into four parts and the first part will be dealing about uh, the vocabulary and part two will be discussing the important terminology that everyone must know in learning vocabulary in an easy way. And the third part will be talking about the process of word formation. And the last part is talking about the aspects of learning vocabulary. So these are the things that we are going to uh, uh, learn in this video. But primarily this lecture will be on the vocabulary and we will we will see the second part third and four parts fourth part in the next lecture so in this lecture we'll be looking at part one that is on vocabulary so uh, without wasting much time let's move on to uh, discussing the topic vocabulary. So to learn what is vocabulary or uh, to learn the vocabulary we must know the importance of vocabulary. So I have uh, explained the importance of vocabulary with two quotations right. You can see those two quotations on the slide. Uh, First one will be looking at how important the words are in our day to day communication. Right? So, words are important. If you cannot say what you mean, you will never mean what you say. And you should always mean what you say. So, so, what I mean to say with this quotation is, if you have thorough vocabulary with you, if you have rich vocabulary with you, or if you have a good vocabulary with you, you will be able to share your ideas clearly to others. You will be able to express your thoughts clearly to others. So if you do not have good vocabulary with you, uh, you will not be able to uh, share your ideas to others. Right? So look at the second one. It talks about the public speaking and the importance of vocabulary. Public speaking is the art of diluting a two minute idea with a two hour vocabulary. This is given by Ivan Issa. And with this, he's talking about the importance of vocabulary in communicating with others. If you have a lot of vocabulary with you, you'll be able to convert two minute idea into two hours lecture right that all depend upon the vocabulary that you have with you so if you want to be become a, a, a great orator you need to have a lot of vocabulary that vocabulary will help you uh, to become great orator or the great speaker how Whatever the ideas that you have will be shared with the vocabulary that you have, right, in an easy way to the listeners. You'll convince others with your vocabulary. 
right? So, if you have good vocabulary, you will be able to uh, turn one minute idea into one hour lecture. That's what I mean to say. This is all possible with, when only you have good vocabulary with you. That's why we must not neglect learning the vocabulary. So, you must learn at least some words daily so that that learning vocabulary will help you to become an effective uh, communicator. So, all the things that I wanted to share with you with these two quotations is the importance of vocabulary. So, as I told you, part one will be uh, dealing with the vocabulary. Vocabulary, right? So, in this part one, we'll be looking at the etymological meaning of the word vocabulary and the second one will be on the types of vocabulary and the last one that we will be dealing with the types of vocabulary. So let us move on to uh, discussing the etymological meaning of the word vocabulary. Vocabulary is an English word. Let us look at the etymological meaning of the word vocabulary. So here you may be wondering what is this etymology or etymological meaning of the word. We will look at that. Etymology uh, is the study of a word, the word origin. So etymology is a subject which studies about the origin of the word. If you take a particular word, for example, the word vocabulary, when was it born? What was the meaning of that word when it was born? In what language it was born? So, all the things are discussed in the subject called etymology. As I told you, uh, we will be looking at the etymological meaning of the word vocabulary. So, if you look at the slide here, so you will see uh, three Latin words for the English word vocabulary. It means that the English word vocabulary is borrowed from uh, the Latin. So, most of the English words are borrowed from either from Greek or Latin. So, uh, even the word vocabulary also is borrowed from the Latin language. So, the English word vocabulary has three roots in Latin. We will be looking at what are those three Latin root words for the word vocabulary. What is the meaning of those three Latin words? And what is the ultimate meaning of the word vocabulary in English? So, if you look at the etymological meaning of the word vocabulary, as I told you, the word vocabulary has taken from the Latin and which has three roots. One is vocabularium and the second one vocabulum and third one is vocab. These are the three Latin roots for the uh, English word vocabulary. So, look at the first Latin root vocabularium. It's a Latin word which means list of words. So, this is one of the root words of English word vocabulary. As I told you, the word vocabulary was born in Latin and the first Latin root for that is vocabularium, which means list of words. Look at the another Latin root for the word vocabulary, vocabulum. This is another root word in Latin for the word Vocabulary. Vocabulum means words, name, or noun. So these are the three meanings given for the Latin uh, root vocabulum. Right? And the third Latin root for the word vocabulary is vocare. So vocare in Latin means to name or call. So by combining all these Three, we have got the English word vocabulary. So, if you look at the meaning of all these Latin root words, 
one common meaning that you will get what is that common word or list of words so vocabulary means words or list of words this meaning is taken from latin roots as i told you from three latin words vocabularium vocabulum and okay these are the three latin roots for the english word vocabulary so the meaning of vocabulary is words or list of words so the etymological meaning of the word vocabulary is words or list of words and the english word vocabulary is roots in latin so we have seen the etymological meaning of the word vocabulary i mentioned two definitions from two dictionaries for the word vocabulary the first one i have taken from cambridge dictionary according to the cambridge dictionary vocabulary means all the words used by a particular person or all the words that exists in a particular language or subjects so all the words that exist in a particular subject or a language is called vocabulary let me repeat it according to the cambridge dictionary vocabulary means all the words that exist in a particular language or subject now when you look at the merriam webster dictionary this is another popular dictionary in the world right according to the merriam webster dictionary what is vocabulary vocabulary means according to this merriam webster dictionary a list or collection of words or of words and phrases usually alphabetically arranged and explained or defined so according to the merriam webster dictionary vocabulary means all the words or phrases or all the words and phrases usually alphabetically arranged and explained or defined so vocabulary means all the words or phrases arranged alphabetically and those words are explained with meaning or those words are defined this is according to the merriam webster dictionary so here we have seen the etymological meaning of the word vocabulary and uh, we've also looked at uh, the meaning of vocabulary uh, from two dictionaries right so let's move on to the types of vocabulary so when it comes to types of vocabulary uh you must remember uh the skills of an english language right to develop english language whether it is speaking or writing you must know about four skills these four skills will help you to improve your uh spoken or written language in english so those four skills are listening skill speaking skill reading skill and writing skills these are the four pillars for anyone who wanted to um uh improve his or her language in the same way we have got four types of vocabulary so what are those four types of vocabulary first one is listening vocabulary next one speaking vocabulary the third one reading vocabulary and the fourth one is writing vocabulary so here speaking and writing vocabulary are called productive vocabulary so uh, productive vocabulary means you uh, you speaking vocabulary when you wanted to speak to others right so writing vocab you use writing vocabulary while writing letters or or whatever right so you use them in your day to day communication whether it is you know formal or informal whatever so the uh, first list first 
vocabulary listening vocabulary and reading vocabulary are called a passive vocabulary whereas speaking vocabulary and writing vocabulary are called active vocabulary right so as i told you we have got four types of vocabulary let us look at each type of vocabulary what is it and why do we need uh, different types of vocabulary so the first vocabulary is listening vocabulary so look at the meaning of the listening vocabulary so the words we hear and understand whatever the words that help you to understand or the thing that you are listening to if you are listening to a, a, an english lecture you need to have good listening vocabulary that listening vocabulary will help you to understand whatever you are listening to so the words we hear and understand are called listening vocabulary so if you have good listening vocabulary you will be able to understand whatever you are listening in english so if you fail to understand something you are listening to it means that you do not have sufficient listening vocabulary that's why uh, you are not able to understand whatever you are listening to so listening vocabulary means the words we hear and understand now look at the another uh, definition of listening vocabulary listening vocabulary refers to the words we need to know to understand what we hear listening vocabulary means the words we need to know to understand what we hear or listen if you want to listen to a lecture on uh, technology in english you need to know a particular type of vocabulary to understand that lecture right so listening vocabulary refers to the words we hear and comprehend so i mentioned three definitions for the listening vocabulary so uh, whichever you feel is easy to understand you can take that right so the first one is very easy that too it is given in one line simple line the words we hear and understand is called listening vocabulary second one is bit lengthy but okay a third one also very simple definition for listening vocabulary what's the third one listening vocab vocabulary refers to the words we hear and comprehend so more or less all the three definition talks about one particular thing that you know the word that help you in understanding whatever you are listening to now move on to the second type of vocabulary so what is the second type of vocabulary that you see here that one the second one is speaking vocabulary so speaking vocabulary is the person speaking vocabulary is all the words he or she uses in speech it is likely to be a sub subset of listening vocabulary it means that if you listen more you will automatically get more speaking vocabulary it's a subset of you know speaking vocabulary is a subset of listening vocabulary i mean these two are interdependent if you listen more you'll be able to speak well right so speaking vocabulary is all uh, the words he or she uses in speech if you have good speaking vocabulary you will be able to speak well not only well you will be able to speak effectively you will be able to uh, share your ideas clearly to others you will be able to uh, express your thoughts clearly to others it's all possible if you have uh, enough speaking vocabulary with you so the words we use when we speak is called speaking vocabulary whatever the words that i am using to speak to you or whatever the words that i am using to give this lecture to you is called speaking vocabulary so 
The words we use when we speak is called speaking vocabulary. Our speaking vocabulary is relatively limited. To speak fluently or to speak well, you don't need to have uh, lakhs and lakhs of vocabulary with you. If you have limited vocabulary also, you can, you'll be able to speak well. See, most adults use a mere 5,000 to 10,000 words for all their conversations and in sections. So if you have vocabulary between 5,000 to 10,000, then you'll become a fluent speaker, right? So uh, most of us use only 5,000 to 10,000 words in our day-to-day -day communication. So we've seen what is listening vocabulary and we've seen the meaning of speaking vocabulary, right? Now move on to the third type of vocabulary, which is reading vocabulary. What is reading vocabulary? Look at this slide here. Reading vocabulary refers to the words that a student can read and understand. So if you can easily understand whatever the piece of uh, passage that you are reading to, it means that you have good reading vocabulary. Reading vocabulary, vocabulary helps you to understand whatever you are reading, whether it is a novel or a text or an essay or whatever. So if you are able to understand the piece of reading, then it means that you have good reading vocabulary. The reading vocabulary help you to understand the piece of reading, whether it is, uh, as I told you, novel or whatever, right? So you might have observed most of the students or most of uh, our colleagues say that we are not able to understand so-and-so uh, essay or so-and-so uh, text. What does that mean? That means that if anyone says that I'm not able to understand that, it means that they do not have enough reading vocabulary with them to read and understand that particular uh, passage or text. So reading vocabulary help you to understand a particular text or to comprehend a particular uh, piece of reading or Reading vocabulary helps you to analyze whatever you are reading too. So, uh, if you have good reading vocabulary, that helps you to understand whatever you are reading here. So, now look at the second meaning of the reading vocabulary. Reading vocabulary refers to the words we need to know to understand what we read. So, ultimately, if you understand whatever you are reading, in that means that you have good reading vocabulary that reading vocabulary helps you in understand the piece of passage that you are reading in right so the words that help you in understanding the piece of uh, passage that you are reading is called reading vocabulary words that you have to understand a piece of passage right so I given simple definition you know, here, reading, reading vocabulary refers to the words we need to know to understand what we read. And in the types of vocabulary, the last one is writing vocabulary. So what is writing vocabulary? So the words are used in various forms of writing from formal essays to social media feed. If you have good vocabulary, a good writing vocabulary, you'll be able to produce good messages, a good uh, letters or good business reports. So your ideas or your thoughts are clearly communicated in the written form. When is this possible? If you have good writing vocabulary. This writing vocabulary is entirely different from speaking. So in speaking, you can use formal or informal words, but when it comes to writing, you need to particular, you need to be 
particular about whom you are writing to if you are writing a letter to an official or a principal or a manager or um or to say a ceo you need to use a particular type of vocabulary to mention in your writing so we must be careful about the writing vocabulary right the words we can retrieve when we write to express ourselves so in writing generally the person whoever writes whether it is a mail or letter will not be there but instead of that person or on behalf of that person whoever write that letter the letter will be speaking to the reader on behalf of the writer that's why uh, you or uh, you must be careful with the uh, the writing vocabulary our writing vocabulary is strongly influenced by the words we can spell so here the writing vocabulary will also be around you know, uh, uh, talking about the way you spell the word right so it means that you know you must be careful while writing uh, a, a letter you must be careful about the spelling of the words that you are writing in a letter over right so so for we have seen four types of vocabulary the first one <coughs> first one is listening vocabulary next one is speaking vocabulary the third one is reading vocabulary the last one is writing vocabulary we have seen uh the meaning of each type of vocabulary right let's move on to the types of vocabulary what is this types of vocabulary right why should we need this why should we learn about the types of vocabulary basically uh types of vocabulary are used for the uh instructional purpose in other words teachers need to know about this types of vocabulary right so for the teachers for the effective teaching uh, to their uh, students right uh, this is given the types of vocabulary is given for the teachers especially so look at uh, the types of vocabulary words are sorted into three types of Types for instructional purpose. Here, instructional means teaching purposes. Type one, type two, and type three. Tied vocabulary is an organizational framework for categorization of words. So, this tied voc vocabulary uh, is an organizational framework for categorizing the words. So. certain types of words are categorized under certain tier of vocabulary certain words come under certain tier tier 1 related to only this vocabulary tier 2 related to this particular vocabulary and tier 3 so we will see look at each type of uh, each tier of vocabulary here so tier 1 is at the bottom and this talks about uh words of everyday speech familiar to most students we will look at this tier 1 what is tier 1 what words come under tier 1 vocabulary who needs this type tier 1 vocabulary right all those things and we will also look at each type of each tier vocabulary in detail so what is this tier 1 vocabulary so tier 1 vocabulary can also be called as basic vocabulary and also general vocabulary basic vocabulary or general right or general vocabulary so what is this general vocabulary or basic vocabulary so uh, to know that let's look at the uh, first point here there are around 8000 words in this first tier of vocabulary that comprises all the basic and familiar words So as I uh, told you, tier one vocabulary can be called as basic vocabulary or general vocabulary, and nearly eight thousand words come under this basic vocabulary or tier one vocabulary, right? And 
This basic vocabulary comprises all the basic and familiar words, whatever the words that we use in our day-to-day -day communication with our friends, parents, relatives. So while talking to them, we use only basic words, not hi-fi words, right? If we use hi-fi words or uh, high terminology with our friends or relatives, they'll not be able to understand and they may think that we do not know anything, in, right? So Tier 1 vocabulary can also be called as basic vocabulary or general vocabulary and this comprises all the basic and familiar words. Tier 1 vocabulary comprises, base, comprises basic and familiar words. Right? Kids are exposed to basic vocabulary at very young age. If you look at small children, um, they learn from the environment, they learn from their friends, they learn vocabulary from their parents, they learn vocabulary from their uh, surroundings, right? So no one will teach them uh, the basic vocabulary that will help them to speak. They'll automatically, even unborn baby learn from, uh, unborn baby in the womb learn from his or her mother, right? Uh, so, what are those basic words, for example, happy, sad, clean, fast, slow, table, baby, rain, cloak, phone, walk, sleep, etc. So, this is all words come under uh, tier 1 vocabulary. All these example words I mentioned here are basic words. Everyone knows this, right? Even uh, an illiterate also can sometimes use English words knowingly or unknowingly, like you know, chair, a glass, right, like that. These are all basic words, and these basic words help them to speak uh, in their day to day communication, right? So, this is about the Tier 1 vocabulary. Next, second one is Tier 2 vocabulary. So what is tied to vocabulary? Tied to vocabulary is called descriptive vocabulary or high frequency vocabulary or multiple meaning vocabulary. So tied to vocabulary can be called in three different ways. Descriptive vocabulary, high frequency vocabulary or multiple meaning vocabulary. There are approximately 7,000 words in Tier 2, right? So descriptive vocabulary, why do we use descriptive vocabulary? To describe situations, to describe persons, uh, to describe events, to describe incidents, right? So we need to have Tier 2 vocabulary to describe certain things, to describe your projects, to narrate your projects, right? So, there are approximately 7,000 words in Tier 2. These words are used across domain by mature language users. Tier 2 vocabulary is used by mature language uh, users. Mature means those who have a, a good command on language. They use different type of vocabulary to convey their uh, intended uh, ideas or thoughts. That's why this is also called as scholarly vocabulary. These scholarly, type 2 vocabulary can also be called scholarly vocabulary, right? So why you no know, research scholars, those who are doing uh, research, PhD or, you know, uh, those who are doing projects need to know a lot of Tier 2 vocabulary uh, to explain about their projects or uh, their research. So, Tier 2 vocabulary can also be called as scholarly words. These scholarly words are seldom used in conversation but, not, but are frequently found in written text. So, as I told you, Tier 2 vocabulary can be called as scholarly vocabulary. 
you can use this scholarly vocabulary in day to day communication with friends you know relatives or you know, officials but you know uh, this type of vocabulary can be found more in um uh, uh in writing so type two words are frequently used with multiple meanings that's why this is used by matured learners so type two vocabulary has multiple meanings for example i mentioned fair here so if you look at the meaning of fair it has several meanings right but that depends upon the context that you are using in one fair means color he is fair in color so so and so a uh, girl is fair i have seen a fair girl there right here i am talking about the girl here fair refers to the color color and another meaning fair talks about uh your attitude or your honesty so if i say that so and so person is fair in his uh duties it means that he is so sincere right he is so honest in uh disposing his duties right and the other one is festival here one meaning is honesty and one meaning is color and other meaning for fair is festival right so that's why type two vocabulary is called scholarly vocabulary and this type two vocabulary used by the matured learner because uh, the type two vocabulary has multiple meaning for example if you take another one bank so if you look at the meaning of bank one is river bank another one is where we uh, where money transactions takes place right where money deposited or withdrawn that is a place right bank so if you look at one more word bat if you look at the uh, me different meaning multiple meanings of the word bat one bat means you know uh, bat which hangs on the trees and normally uh, comes out especially in the nights right and the another meaning for the bat you know cricket bat or shuttle bat right so type two words are frequently used with multiple meanings right in the same way you might have a uh, hard uh, one more word like you know uh present present means a gift and present means your presence right and one more object has two meanings object a thing and another meaning object means reject i object your proposal right so type two vocabulary has multiple meanings that's why type two vocabulary is used by mature language users and look at the uh, voc- examples i mentioned disaster fortunate measure terrified and like normal speaker cannot use these words because these words are little difficult to understand right so that's why uh, i told you that you know type two vocabulary is used by the mature language users right and see why do we need type two vocabulary what is the necessity to learn about a type two vocabulary so uh, look at uh, the importance of learning type two vocabulary why should we learn about uh, the type two vocabulary so first one is that will help you to solve the reading comprehension if you have type two vocabulary with you you'll be able to comprehend whatever you are reading to 
Type 2 vocabulary helps you to understand whatever you are reading and help you to comprehend that, help you to analyze whatever you are reading. So, type 2 vocabulary is necessary for reading comprehension. If you uh, have written competitive examination, you will have, you have come across reading comprehension passages, right? To understand and answer to the questions given under that passage, you need to have type 2 vocabulary, right? So, type 2 vocabulary is necessary for uh, uh, doing reading comprehension. And look at the second one, type 2 vocabulary is necessary for understanding multiple meanings. As I mentioned some examples previously like, you know, uh, fair, bat, right, bank. So these words, of course, I given only few. But many words have multiple meanings and you need to know uh, the multiple, multiple meaning of that particular word so that you know, you'll be able to use that uh, particular words effectively in your uh, oral as well as written communication. And that uh, also help you to understand whatever you are reading, right? So to understand multiple meaning of that word or, or words. Generalizing words across a learning environment. This is another, you know, a necessity to learn uh, tire to vocabulary. Helping students use specific language to describe concepts. So if you are uh, working on a project, you need to know what type of vocabulary to use, you're supposed to use to explain that project. If you are writing a thesis, you need to know what type of vocabulary you are supposed to use in writing those thesis. So, type 2 vocabulary help you to choose appropriate vocabulary so that, you know, uh, that piece of writing or the piece of communication become more effective. So, writing reports, emails, theses, projects. So, for all these things, Type 2 vocabulary is useful for you. If you have good type 2 vocabulary, this writing reports, emails, thesis, and projects will become easy to you. If you are writing an email to company HR, you should know what type of vocabulary you are supposed to use in that email. And if you are writing a thesis on uh, photosynthesis, you should know uh, what type of vocabulary you supposed to use in the thesis. So type 2 vocabulary help you to write effective reports, effective emails and thesis projects etc. Now move on to type 3 vocabulary. So type 3 vocabulary is called low frequency and context specific. So type 3 vocabulary will be called as low frequency and context specific. In other words, subject specific. Context specific means subject specific. So there are approximately 4 lakh words in this tire of vocabulary. These words are specific for each subject. As I told you, tire 3 vocabulary is low frequency and subject or context specific. So these type 3 vocabulary are specific for each subject or domain. If I am studying law, I need to learn uh, uh, vocabulary which are specific to my domain. What is that vocabulary? Legal terminology. If you are posing law, you need to learn about all the legal terminology. That is very much subject related. What subject it is? Law subject. So you must know about all the legal terminology to excel in, uh, in law or uh, to become an effective lawyer, you need to know all the terminology that you uh, come across in law. So, tire 
three vocabulary, as I told you, subject specific vocabulary. If you are a medical student, you need to know all the medical terminology that will help you to become an effective, uh, sorry, uh, uh, an expert doctor. So if you have subject specific vocabulary with you, that subject specific vocabulary help you in understanding whether it is, you know, whatever the subject that you take related to your uh, course, right? So tier three vocabulary is very much subject related, right? Or domain. These words are necessary to understand specific concepts taught in the subject. If you are an aeronautical student, you need to know the terminology which is related to the aeronautics. If you know all the terminology about the aeronautics, then the, all the subject related to the aeronaut becomes very easy to you. So that's why tier three vocabulary is subject specific. For example, aeronautical engineering, medical, right, law, nursing, business, right. So each subject has its own vocabulary. You should not use law vocabulary in the medical field. Medical terminology in business communication. Right? So, uh, sub tier 3 vocabulary talks about all these subject specific vocabulary. If you are a medical student, you must be thorough with all the medical terminology, subject specific terminology that will make you an effective, no, sorry, a, 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 a good doctor. So, these words are context specific and necessary for in depth understanding of the subject. So, if you want to excel in your field, in law field, you must have in depth understanding of all the long, uh, law terminology. For example, if you are a nurse, you need to know the terminology that you use with the patients, right? So all the nursing terminology that you must be thorough with. If you are a business graduate or MBA graduate, you must know all the business terminology, right? So tier three vocabulary is about the subject specific and you must have in-depth understanding of that subject. So to understand, to for in-depth understanding of that subject, you must have in-depth knowledge of the uh, particular terminology, right? As students move to upper secondary, they are required to understand many tier three words. If you are moving from intermediate to graduation, graduation to close to graduation, you must know uh, uh, the terminology which is relevant to your subject area. So that will help you to understand the uh, subject in higher classes. So it is recommended that tier 2 words, uh, sorry, here tier 3, wrongly mentioned here. Uh, it is recommended that tier 3 words are targeted to maximize the efficiency of teaching. So, as I told you, tier 1, 2, 3 are divided for the instructional purpose. The, the, the three tires will help the teacher uh, to know the, what tire of vocabulary that the student has. Based on that, they'll design their lesson plan so that their lesson will reach the students. Right? Even this uh, three tiles, knowing about the three tiles will also help the learner to know what type of vocabulary he or she has and how to improve that. And this knowing each type of vocabulary will help the student uh, to know their level of vocabulary. Right? So, uh, some of the examples that I mentioned here for type 3 vocabulary are molecule, legislate, osmosis, photosynthesis, isocyls, amino acid, latitude, microeconomics, photosynthesis, etc. So, to understand the meaning of all these things, you must be specific to that particular 
field. I no need to learn about uh, amino acids, photosynthesis because I am an English teacher. For teaching purpose, I may know, I may try to know the meaning of these things if I come across these words in, our, in my teaching. But I no need to go in depth, me in depth of that word to know more about that word, right? So, so far we have seen the etymological meaning of the word vocabulary. As I told you, the vocabulary, the word vocabulary has come from the Latin and that has Latin roots and we have seen three Latin roots for the word vocabulary and we have seen the meaning of each Latin root, right? And we have also discussed the uh, definition of, you know, two dictionaries on vocabulary. I, I mentioned two definitions for vocabulary taken from two different dictionaries. And next we looked at the types of vocabulary, right? And we have seen four types of vocabulary, listening vocabulary, reading, writing and speaking vocabulary. And we looked at, we looked at the meaning of each type of vocabulary. And then we moved on to discussing the types of vocabulary. We've seen why uh, the vocabulary divided into ties and what type of vocabulary comes under each tire, right? And what is the meaning of each tire of vocabulary? All these things. So with this, I'll end my lecture. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.